Luke chapter number 2, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are thankful for the good singing we enjoyed. We're thankful to be in the house of God this morning. We're thankful for these in attendance. Lord, I'm thankful they're not sick and they were able to come. Lord, our heart goes out to those who are having to watch live stream because uh, of sickness, and we know their heart is to be here. Lord, they long to be here. And so, Father, I pray that you would touch them, you would heal them. Lord, you're the great physician, and God, I pray you'd do great things for them that they might be back soon, and Lord, we'll be back to full strength. Thank you for those who have stepped up and doing roles they normally wouldn't do because, oh Lord, they have a heart to serve the Lord. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us now. We're so grateful for the Word of God and the house of God. And Lord, I pray you'd help us from the Scriptures. Lord, you know the need of every heart here today. Lord, you know our downsitting, our uprising. You know our yesterdays. You know our todays. You know tomorrow. You know the very number of the hairs on our head. You know everything about us. And you certainly know the need of our hearts. And Lord, I pray for those that are struggling, you would help them. Those that are weak, you would strengthen them. Those that are searching, they would find you. Lord, those that, uh, Lord, are, are overwhelmed, they would find your grace. And Lord, I certainly pray if there's any amongst us who are lost, who do not know the Savior, that, Lord, today would be the day of their salvation. Help us, we pray. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. But, Lord, through you, there's nothing we cannot do. So help us to be more than conquerors. Help us to be persuaded. And help us to be all that we can be for the cause of Christ. Uh, thank you for that marvelous grace. Uh, thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for shedding your blood that we might be saved. Uh, Thank you for your goodness. Have your will and way now, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do ask these things. Amen. Amen. Now, I know this is the Christmas story, and I know you've heard it many times. Uh, one thing this year you're not going to hear from Charlie Brown unless you've got that sight that streams him. Uh, uh, but uh, I want to uh, just bring out some truths uh, to get to a thought in this uh, text that the Lord has given me. The first thing I want you to notice... Uh, I want you to notice the mandate. Uh, we find in verses 1 through 3, there went out a decree into all the known world at that time that everyone should be taxed. Uh, and they had to be taxed uh, according to their lineage. And uh, depending on what city you was from, that's where you had to go pay your taxes. Uh, now, I don't like to admit this. Miss Noreen, stop up your ears. Uh, I, I, I am not a Yankee but I was born in Cincinnati, okay? Uh, 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 I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Kentuckian bred, uh, but I have lived here longer than I lived in uh, uh, Ohio, and I can say this too, uh, both my parents were Kentuckians, so there's got to be somewhere, somewhere along the line that, you know, I am a hillbilly. But uh, 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 if uh, today's society said you had to be taxed from the city, uh, that you was born in, I'd have to make that long pilgrimage uh, over the Ohio River and pay my taxes there. Uh, well, that's very important in this uh, 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 story because uh, 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 Joseph was espoused to Mary, uh, and Mary and Joseph had to get to Bethlehem because uh, uh, the book of Micah tells us uh, it was prophesied that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. But notice the mandate. 
The government was telling everyone what they had to do. Isn't it amazing? That's the first time he came. The second time Jesus comes, the government will be telling everybody what to do and getting it ready for the Antichrist, the one opposite of Christ who's going to rule the world after Jesus takes his church out of here. So we see the mandate. I want you to notice Mary. This is very important. Look at verse 5. The Bible says that Joseph uh, went to, uh, to Bethlehem in verse 4, and verse 5 is to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. That word espoused is very important. That means they weren't married yet. Now, unlike today's society, in Bible days, if a lady was with child before they were married, they'd take her out and they'd stone her because that was sinful. But you see, Mary wasn't with child because she'd been sinful. You see, if we went back and read Luke chapter number 1, you find that the archangel comes to Mary and begins to tell her she found favor with God uh, and she was going to have a child. And she said, how can this be, seeing I have never known a man? And uh, uh, the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee and come upon thee, and that which is born of thee is born of the Holy Ghost. Now, Mary was a virgin. You see, if she's not a virgin, the Christmas story doesn't matter. If she's not a virgin, none of us have hope of heaven. You see, my dear friends, when Adam and Eve were uh, 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 formed, Adam was formed out of the dust of the ground, uh, and God breathed in him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Uh, and then God put Adam to sleep, took his rib, and made, Mary, uh, made Eve. Uh, and Adam and Eve were the two, first two humans. Uh, they were uh, uh, placed in a perfect place called Eden. Uh, they were in a perfect environment. They were sinless. They were just like Christ but they chose to sin. God told them they could eat of every tree in the garden except one. said, the day you eat of it, you're going to die. And that day they did partake of it, they did die spiritually. And you see, sin came into the world and death by sin. Everything that is wrong in the world is wrong because of that decision they made. But you see, God is a loving God. God loves His creation. And God decided uh, He wasn't going to let His creation die and go to hell. So He sent a Savior. But you see, Jesus had to be born of a virgin because Jesus' blood couldn't have been earthly blood because He couldn't have redeemed us from our sin. Amen. You see, His blood had to be heavenly blood. If you uh, 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 was a medical expert, and if you want the book, I've got a book called The Chemistry of the Blood. And it makes it very clear uh, that the baby gets his blood from the Father. And you see, Christ uh, was born of a virgin, uh, uh, and his blood came from glory. Uh, uh, why did he have to do this and come this way? Because under the law, uh, in order to redeem somebody, you had to be a kinsman. So in order to redeem mankind, you had to become a man. Uh, so God took off his uh, heavenly robes and put on a robe of flesh. Uh, he was born of a virgin that you and I might have a Savior. What a blessing. We're thankful for that, that Mary was espoused to Joseph. And by the way, the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and told him, don't put her away. She's been espoused to you. The marriage has been arranged. Uh, she's with child, but this thing's of God. That's why Joseph continued to take her as his wife. Now notice, if you will, the manger, verse number 7. The Bible says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, uh, that's a real soft, almost like well, what a onesie would be today. They would wrap him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Can I say, when Jesus came the first time, the world wasn't ready for him. You cer certainly would think that if they knew God's Son was coming, they'd had the best room in the inn ready for him. But see, they wasn't ready for him. Can I help you with something? The next time Jesus comes, the world won't be ready for him. Mm. But he was born in a manger. 
You see, he didn't come to be the king. He came to be savior. And can I say, he came through the manger, and in a minute you'll see he came to shepherds because he came to the common man because we have a common problem, sin. Jesus is interested in all of us. And I thank the Lord for that. He didn't just come to the high and mighty. He didn't come to the rich. He didn't come to the big names. He came for everybody. Now notice, if you will, the manifestation in verse number 8. The Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. We see the manifest an angel appears to these shepherds. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm out hanging with a bunch of sheep, and an angel shows up, I'm going to see what that other shepherd gave me to drink. Huh? I don't know about you, but that freaked me out. Hmm? It freaked them out. Because notice the message of the angel. Fear not. Why? Because they was freaked out. Fear not. Verse number 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. So we see the message. Notice the message in about the angel. Notice the message in about Serenius, the evil governor. Notice the message is about Christ. When our message loses Christ, we have no message. There's nothing I despise more than seeing Xmas. We're going to take Christ out of Christmas. And then a few years ago, they tried to justify it and say, well, that was a symbol. The X was a symbol for Christ. Hogwash. Put Christ back in Christmas. X means you don't want him there. Notice, if you will, the multitude after that. I mean, if they were freaked out before that, now look at the multitude. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. More angels. A whole multitude. Praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Notice when Christ was presented in the message, all of heaven got excited. Can I say that the Bible says that there's joy in the presence of the angels over a sinner that repents? Anytime Christ does a work, the heavenly host gets excited. Hmm? Now, notice it didn't say the angels rejoiced because they didn't know what, but uh, over a sinner that repents, they don't know about repenting. But when they see Christ excited and they see the, the folks that have gone on before us excited, they get a little excited too. They don't even know why they're excited. That's why even Phil gets excited, sometimes Kayla gets excited and she don't even know why. Huh? But notice, if you will, the moving of the shepherds. Look what happens to these guys. They hear a message, they see the multitude praising God. And look at verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Look at verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Can I say this? Anybody that ever gets to Jesus, it changes their life. Amen. These guys were just hanging out with sheep. They hear a message, they go see that it's true, and then they come back, what do they do? They're telling everybody and they're praising God. When somebody meets the Master, they can't help it but tell somebody else and praise the Lord. I'm interested in this thought this morning. Just a little simple thought. I knew where numbers would be down. I didn't want to weigh you down with something real heavy. I just got a little simple thought. I'm going to preach on the spirit of Christmas. The spirit of Christmas. Now, I want to go down on record as I love Christmas. I love everything about Christmas. I do. I love the lights. I love the twinkling stars. I love the silver bells. Uh I love uh, Elvis singing his Christmas time baby. I mean, I love everything about Christmas. I love it. I love the fat guy in the suit. 
I love the reindeer. I love it all. I love Chevy Chase's house decorated where the power company goes out of business. I like it all. I like Christmas. I like uh, going in stores and hearing Christmas music. I like Christmas. I mean, you know, for, for, since November, about 1st of November, uh, uh, that channel 93.3 has, has played Christmas music, and now Warm 98 is playing Christmas music, and I'm listening to all of it. I love uh, Christmas so much, I watch all the Hallmark Christmas movies. Well, I say all of them. Some of them this year I'm not watching. But anyway, I like it. They all end the same. It snows and they kiss. I mean, it all ends the same. But I like it. I like Christmas. Always have. Christmas was a big deal in our family. My grandpa was raised around the Depression. My grandpa never saw a birthday cake till he was 11 years old, and that's because he passed by a house and saw, looked in the window and saw a little girl had a birthday cake. My grandpa grew up with nothing. He grew up in a day and age, if you got an apple for Christmas, that was something. I mean... So when we came along, he made Christmas a big deal. Now, my granddad was a pastor. He made Christmas a big deal in the church. And we always had a tree in the church. And everybody would bring a gift for kids in the church. Uh, 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 and they'd mark them boy or girl because back then things were tight in the 70s. I mean, it was bad. The economy was bad. And a lot of he, my grandpa was afraid there might be a child that wouldn't have much of a Christmas. Uh, and so every year at the Christmas program, they'd give out gifts to all the kids. I mean, it was a big deal. And at home, it was always a big deal. My grandpa, nobody could ever fool him. He always knew what he's getting for Christmas. Always. Uh, I mean, he walked with God so much, God told him what he was getting for Christmas, I guess. That's all I know. But Christmas has always been a big deal. We make a big deal Christmas at our house. Uh, we toned it down this year. We only put up three Christmas trees. I mean, I mean, it's a big deal. Miss Annette has decorations in the bathroom. I mean, it's a big deal Christmas. We like it. So I like Christmas. But could I say, the spirit of Christmas is being lost. You see, Christmas today has become commercialized so much that we forget what it's about. Christmas today is chaotic. I make a point by this time of the year, avoid Mall Road. Thanks be unto God for COVID because now you can drive Mall Road. But normally it's crazy. It's chaotic. And Christmas has become a chore. It's a chore to find that PlayStation 5 that all the kids want. It's a chore to find this and a chore to do this and a chore to do that. I mean, it's just a chore. We've lost the spirit of Christmas. In these verses, I find the spirit of Christmas. Can I say, first of all, the spirit of Christmas embodies the gospel. Look again in verse number 10. The Bible says this, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now notice, the angel says, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. If you're here today and you're a stranger to the grace of God, I've got good news for you today. Uh, the good tidings of the Christmas message uh, has become the gospel or the good news uh, for those that don't know God. Uh, what is the gospel? Uh, my dear friends, the very Christ uh, that was born that night, uh, uh, He lived His life, uh, a sinless, perfect life. He became the Lamb of God. Uh, uh, can I say, the Lamb of God went to the cross of Calvary, uh, and He died according to the Scriptures. Uh, uh, the Old Testament was filled with prophecies of the Savior uh, and he fulfilled them all uh, and he died he shed his blood uh, he de suffered the death of the torture of the cross uh, uh, for the Bible says without the shedding of blood there's no remission for sins uh, uh, you see God always required a blood sacrifice uh, uh, and it all pointed to the fact that one day he would shed his own blood uh, uh, to be your sacrifice and my sacrifice uh, you see going to church won't get you to heaven uh, being baptized won't get you to heaven. Uh, I try to be a good person won't give, get you to heaven. Uh, the only thing that gets you to heaven is Jesus. Uh, and he shed his blood uh, and he died according to the scriptures. Uh, he was buried uh, and on the third appointed day he rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, the good news is uh, you don't have to die 
in your sin. Uh, you don't have to die and go to hell. Uh, a Savior came uh, and He died for you uh, so He could save you from your sins uh, so you could have heaven as your home and have God as your heavenly Father. Jesus came to restore what was lost in Adam and Eve. He came to save sinners. Again, He didn't come to be the king. But the next time he comes, he'll be the king. He's Lord of lords and King of kings. Uh, and next time they'll see him as the king. But he came as a lamb. So you can know him as Lord and king. The good news, the gospel, came because of the spirit of Christmas. Notice, if you will, something that's overlooked in verse number 10. He said... Uh, the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And by the way, when you get saved, you get joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, the Bible says rejoice evermore. We've got something to rejoice in because I'm going to heaven. It amazes me they can fill up a, a football stadium or a basketball stadium. Uh, UK can be playing basketball and the whole state turns blue, all except Louisville. Uh, and it gets, I mean, folks, they shout their lungs out. They have a good time. They enjoy watching UK. Not enjoying it so much this year, but they enjoy watching them play. And there's no problem getting excited about that. But you look at somebody that once was lost on their way to hell, a sinner uh, uh, deserving to go to hell, uh, and God changes their life and saves them, and now they're going to heaven. You get excited about that. They look at you like you're a freak. I got news for you. Basketball ain't going to take you to heaven, but Jesus will. Amen. What's wrong with being excited about being saved? You get joy in your heart when you get saved. Because right. Jesus changes your life. But notice that next line there. I want you to see it. Which shall be to some people. Is that what it says? It says it shall be to all people. Jesus tasted death for all men. He died for you. He died for me. The Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. He died for you, my dear friends. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He died for you. He died for me. He didn't just die for the elite. He died for everybody. And I bless his holy name. We see the spirit of Christmas embodies the gospel. Notice the gift of Christmas. I know some of you all looking for that G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip or whatever it is. Huh? Mm, that perfect gift. You know what I found? And my kids are starting to like this now. They're getting old. The perfect gift is green. Yeah. Preferably got several zeros on it. You know what I'm saying? That's the perfect gift. huh? But notice the gift of, the go of, of Christmas. Look at verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The greatest gift ever given. God gave His only begotten Son. For God so loved the world, that means He loved it on purpose, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave a gift. Now this morning, if I said, I have a gift for you. Whatever gift you want. You want a trip to Hawaii? Here it is. You want a new car? Here it is. Phil, you want that new truck with them big mudder tires on it, you know, jacked up, you know, about an 18-inch eight, lift, you know. Yeah. No running boards because you got to get a ladder to get in it, you know. Huh? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. He's got a truck, but he wants to be a redneck. He does. He wants to be bad. Every time we go down business, he says, oh, look at that truck, preacher, I want that truck. We saw one yesterday. He licked my, my window, my car, looking at that truck. Uh, maybe it's that. Maybe you want something for somebody else. Well, you want a gift. Whatever your desire is. If I had it right here, I said, here it is. Unless you receive it, it ain't going to do you any good. Miss Noreen, when Randy wraps up that big, pretty present, hopefully with something sparkling inside it, and he puts it under the tree and says, to my love, Noreen, uh, and it's not the keys to the Harley, it's something just for you, all right? And if unless you get that gift and you open up and you receive it, it was a waste of money as far as you're concerned. Well, friends, God gave His Son. And 
it's far better than a truck. <laughs> it's far better than something shiny. Uh, it's better than Hawaii. I've been there, trust me. He gave His only begotten Son to take away your sin and make you a citizen of heaven to give you a better life now and then eternal life with Him forever. He gave that for you. And all you got to do is receive it. If you don't receive it, it does you no good. does you no good. The Bible says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. The Jews rejected Him. They still do. But it goes on to say, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. I'm glad that on the third Saturday night of March 1974, I received the Lord as my personal Savior, and He changed me that night, and I'm a citizen of His, his, his land. What a blessing to be saved today. The gift is the Savior. I want you to notice something else about the spirit of Christmas. It embodies glory. Look at verse 14. What's, what's the heavenly host say? Glory to God in the highest. What do you think we got that banner up there? The reason I'm going to heaven is not because of me. It's because of what he done. So he gets all the glory for it. You see, if you could earn your way to heaven, God wouldn't get the glory. But you can't. Everybody that goes to heaven is going to glorify God because they know they got there because of him. Matter of fact, in the city of New Jerusalem, it says the gates are pearl. Pearls come about by suffering. That oyster has to suffer, and uh, usually it begins with a, a little piece of sand or a little grit gets down inside that oyster and he can't get it out, so he secretes that mother of pearl solution to try and ease his suffering because that is eating at him. Uh, and uh, uh, what happens over time is that uh, that pearl is formed because of that mother of pearl uh, solution that it secretes because it's suffering. My dear friends, we get to go to heaven because Jesus suffered for us. And those gates of pearl to remind us of that so we never lose sight of the fact why we, why we are there and God gets the glory. And we see in the spirit of Christmas there's glory. And the glory should go to God. But it also embodies gentleness. Look what it says. Glory to God in the highest, verse 14, and on earth peace. You see... Many people in the Christmas carols and everything, they're looking for peace now. The only way you'll find peace now is finding Jesus. Right. Yep. He is the Prince of Peace. And he told his disciples before he ascended back up into heaven, he says, my peace I leave with thee. Not peace as the world knoweth, my peace. But what it is referring to right here is an on earth peace. It's referring to uh, having harmony, absence of war gentleness it's referring to being having helpfulness helping out a neighbor not being at odds with a neighbor and it deals with having happiness because you're at peace there's just something about having peace that brings happiness and can I say when you received Christ you got the peace of God in your soul you have peace with God before you're at enmity with God when you're at enmity with God, that means God's against you. See, God loves sinners, but He hates sin. And God will not accept somebody till their sin is forgiven. And your sins are forgiven when you receive Christ and ask Him to forgive you. And it's, it's very simple. And when that happens, you get the peace of God because now God's not against you, God's for you. And the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? There's just something about being able to put my head on my pillow at night having peace. Knowing that even if I don't wake up, it's all going to be okay. Because God's in control of my life. But it embodies gentleness. And then I thought about this lastly. The spirit of Christmas also embodies goodwill. Look what it says. And on earth peace, verse, 11, or verse 14, goodwill toward men goodwill toward men now that doesn't sound like what happens you know at the store when they get run a special and only got five of them and there's ten that want it there's always some ungood will going on 
I've seen back when they had Kmart and had the blue light special and they, they had pan I've seen I've seen this with my own eyes. These two ladies were fighting over pantyhose and one of them had one leg and the other one had the other. I was thinking, how far is that thing going to stretch? There was no goodwill. Hmm? Y'all remember, they say this is the worst rated Christmas movie ever, but I, you know, it came about when Jordan was a kid and we watched it 50 times and I liked the movie. I thought it was pretty good. Anybody ever seen Jingle All the Way? Yeah. With Arnold Schwarzenegger? And he had to get the Turbo Man doll. And he's fighting the mailman over the Turbo Man. There wasn't no goodwill in that movie. Now, the second one stunk. Larry the Cable Guy, which I love Larry the Cable. He just makes me laugh looking at him. Uh, but uh, Larry the Cable Man did the second jingle all the way, and it, it was bad. I mean, it was really bad. I mean, it, was, it was bad. Uh, but listen, goodwill is a portion of the spirit of Christmas. What does that mean? It means being charitable. There's a lot of people right now, especially this year, because they're out of work. You know, I'd hate to be a restaurant server right now. Amen. The government tell me I'm non-essential, but Amazon's running 24/7. Yep, sure. Walmart's running 24/7. Yep. You can't tell me going to a little restaurant that I got greater odds of getting COVID than I do going into Walmart where there's 60,000 people in there right now. Huh? You know why it is? Amazon, Walmart, and all that. They're big money corporations. They got money in all the politicians' pockets, you know. But little local restaurant doesn't. Now, explain it. I'm on this, so I'm going to say this. Explain this to me. We went by somewhere the other day, and I said, I told her, I said, well, they got a tent set up. They got the restaurant shut down. She says, oh, no, they're allowed to have outside dining, not inside. There's the same amount of people in that outside tent that there is inside. What in the world? Who is that hypocrisy? I'm yes, telling you, who's is. that crazy? Yep. Huh? <laughs> Stinking liberals. Yes, right. Amen. Uh, that is absolutely crazy. If the Lord don't change my heart, come back tonight. I'm working on a message that the liberals will hate. Goodwill means being charitable. Having a giving spirit. Well, that's one thing I love about our church. Our church is known throughout the world. There are people watching from St. Lucia today that will testify to this. By the way, in St. Lucia, they're only allowed to have 25 in service. So they have to rotate who gets to come to church. Uh, I was thinking about making just a quick trip down there, but I wouldn't get to see everybody, so I've got to wait till they loosen it up. There are people watching our services. There are people in, in Guyana watching our services. People in Trinidad watching our services. And you know what they would all say? Emmanuel Baptist Church is a giving church. Go in the library and look at all the gifts we took up for them foster kids we're going to deliver this week. You can't even walk. The floor is covered with all the gifts. Miss Taylor didn't. She don't know how she's going to take She said, can I borrow your truck? She said, but I don't know how to drive it. I'm thinking, hmm, let me think about this for a minute. No. It's being charitable. That's one of the things I love about Christmas is people in general are giving. I don't know about you, but even when we order food out and have it, we give a bigger tip. You know, people are giving this time of year. Unless they're like Turbo Man Hunter. But most people are giving. And, and they're charitable. Can I say it means to be compassionate? There are a lot of people less fortunate. Do you know that Christmas time is the worst time of the year for suicides? Because people feel all alone. They see all this festivity going on. They feel all alone. They feel like their life is worthless. Now, we know, being Bible believers, that Jesus loves everybody. Nobody's life is worthless. I don't care how down on the, in their luck they are. Jesus still loves them. I don't care where they come from. Jesus still loves them. They're not worthless, but they feel that way. They get so depressed because they're not festive. That's why you and I need to really be compassionate. Reach out to people. Be good to people. I tell you all the time, be good to people when you're out there. A lot of people are having hard times. A lot of people facing hard things. A lot of families are broken up. A lot of kids are facing hard things. Uh, uh, folks can't pay their bills. Folks got car problems. Folks got, they have problems. Be good to people. 
Show them compassion. Somebody cuts you off. Don't horn cuss them. You know, I like to horn cuss people sometimes. Don't horn cuss them. We say, what's horn cuss them? <coughs> but see, I don't just do it once. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm three or four times. You know, I'm embarrassed missing that half death. Don't horn cuss people. Their minds are overloaded. Their lives are overloaded. And a lot of times they're not even thinking. You know, show them some compassion. Horn cuss them next week, okay? Huh? No, be good to people. Now's a good time to do that. It's the spirit of Christmas. But the real spirit of Christmas is to be Christ-like. You say, what does that mean? They were first called Christians in Antioch. Christian means Christ-like. Being Christ-like means that you put others before yourself. That you humble yourself and you put others before yourself. That you show love to people who don't deserve love. Because I'm telling you, none of us deserve to God's love. But He loved us anyway. Show love to people. Be good to people. Take your time with people. Listen to people. Boy, I don't know how many times God's listened to me in the midnight hour. Just be good. Be Christ-like. You embody the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit that Jesus had. And let that impact somebody else's life. Because really that's what Christmas is about, impacting somebody else's life. And no better way or greater way than sharing Jesus with them. So I wonder... On this day, when there's not many here, do you embody the spirit of Christmas? That's what we ought to do. Love the lights. Love it all. But don't forget the spirit of it. And live the spirit of Christmas. You'll impact somebody's life. Listen, I don't like to toot my own horn, but, you know, I've found when you treat people with respect, it goes a long ways. And when you're kind to people, it goes a long way. And when you're just real, there's nothing I hate worse than churchy people that aren't real. Hmm? Like the old Saturday Night Live church lady character. I don't like people like that. I want genuine people. That's, a, that's, that's, that's part of being Christ-like. Just be genuine. Be real. Help people where they're at. Love them where they're at. And there's no telling. You might just impact somebody's life. And there's nothing more gratifying than knowing God used you to impact somebody else's life. All right, let's all stand. Miss Renee, come to the piano. We're going to have an invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord for the great gift He gave you Himself. Maybe you need to come and tell Him you love Him. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, help me to embody the spirit of Christmas this season. Maybe you're here today and you don't know the Lord, but the Lord's touched your heart and you want to know Him. If you'll come, we'll take a Bible and show you how you can know Him. You need to show you what it takes to be saved. Maybe this morning, you just want to go to somebody and tell them you appreciate them. I don't know. I know one thing. Christmas is upon us. But do we really show the spirit of Christmas? These are praying. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Christmas story. But thank you more for the Christmas reality in my heart for the day you saved me. Now, Lord, I pray. Lord, you touch hearts and touch lives. Lord, if there's somebody watching or somebody here that doesn't know you, I pray they'd understand the real gift of Christmas was you. And they'd come to receive you as Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, bless. Help these in the altar. You know what they're there for. Bless, meet the needs of their hearts. Lord, bless this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.